Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part seven of my trigonometry tutorial series. In this part, we're going to continue talking about trig identities, and I'm going to talk about double angle and Pythagorean identity specifically, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so more memorization of little formulas here that we can use to dramatically simplify our code. Now, understand, I am going to be using all of these identities that I covered in the last video also here. So I present them here just so you can see them. Actually, can I? There you go. So now you can actually see all of them sort of on the screen at the same time. All right. So let's get to Pythagorean identities, all right? So this is going to be another way for us to dramatically simplify very complicated things. So let's say we have a formula that's cosine squared and then pi over two. We're just going to verify that what we have here is actually true right now, okay? And what is pi over two? What is that in degrees? It is 90 degrees. So let's go sine squared and again this is the same and this is equal to one let's verify that this is indeed true well if we go and plug this into a calculator this comes out to zero squared which is zero and one squared which is one which gives us one all right so indeed true now let's step it up here and get even more complicated well actually you know what let's go and prove that this one is true and then I think you'll trust that everything, the other one is true. So I'm going to say 1 plus tangent squared. And let's do pi over 6. What is that in degrees? 30. Okay. And then we have our secant squared. And pi over 6. And this is going to turn into 1 plus. And we'll go and convert the tangent into its sine cosine variation so this is going to be sine of pi over 6 over cosine pi over 6 and this is going to be squared which is going to be equal to and let's convert this into its cosine variation cosine and pi over 6 over 1 and indeed squared and this converts into 1 plus and one half squared over square root of three over two squared equal to one over square root of three and two squared. And if we go and multiply everything by three fourths, and this is going to further simplify to 1 plus 1 over 4, 3 over 4 equal to 1 over 3 over 4. And of course, if I multiply everything times 3 fourths, this becomes 3 fourths plus 1 fourth, which equals 1. And indeed, 4 over 4 equals 1, so you know this is indeed true. Okay, so I proved both of those. Let's go and do another problem. All right. So let's go and get something ridiculously complicated. Let's go cosine to the power of 3x minus cosine of x over sine, whoops, sine power of 3x minus sine of x. Well, as you can see, we're going to be able to use negative cosine and variation of what's above is equal to sine squared x minus 1. And also we will say sine squared x is equal to 1 minus cosine squared x. And based off of this, well, first I'm going to go and get rid or factor this. So x 1 minus cosine squared x. Sometimes I see stuff and I get ahead of myself there. So sine x sine squared x minus 1. All right. And then you will be able to simplify this using what I just did. Cosine x times sine squared x. 
and this will be sine x times negative cosine squared x. And then if we simplify this down even further, this is going to become sine of x negative cosine of x, which is, of course, negative tangent x. So big difference between these two guys right here. Okay, so let's go and do something even more complex. All right, so this time I'm going to say 1 over 1 minus cosine of x plus 1 over 1 plus cosine of x. Well, I need to get my common denominator here. So what this is going to end up being is, of course, this is equal. I'm going to multiply. This is going to become a little bit complicated. So this is going to be negative cosine of x plus 1 cosine of x plus 1. Okay. And what if I do that to both this side and this side, well, that means I just have to multiply this. So this is going to go up here, and this is going to go right there. And if indeed that happens, what I'm going to have is cosine of x plus 1 minus cosine of x plus 1. Okay, hopefully you see how that works. And then this is going to just cancel out and cancel out. And we will end up having, let's just go and copy this whole entire, well, you know what, let's, well, I'll leave it on the screen. I don't want to go and delete stuff. So I'm going to go like this, copy this, paste this, and hopefully you see here that this just simply becomes 2 because of cancellations. So this is 2. And then what we can do is further simplify this down to 1 minus cosine squared x with a 2 on top, which, based off of what we have learned in the past, gives us 2 cosecant squared x. All right. And those are some ways we can use Pythagorean identities. Now let's talk about double angle formulas or double angle identities. Okay, so here are our formulas, and basically these double angle identities are going to involve trig functions of double angles, as you can see right here. All right, so using those, let's solve some problems. So let's say I have sine of 2x cosine of x. Well, this is going to, using these formulas, convert to 2 sine of x cosine of x over cosine of x, and that is just simply going to turn into 2 sine of x. All right, let's do another one. Let's say we have 1 half, this is going to be a little bit more complicated, cotangent of x plus 1 half tangent of x. Well, I know that cotangent is going to be equal to the cosine over sine. And I also know that tangent is equal to the sine over cosine. So knowing this information, what I can do is this is going to become one half cosine of x over the sine of x plus one half sine of x over cosine of x. Let's go and, of course, I think you, you, you can kind of see here. Do I even have to do this? I don't think I have to. All right. So this is just this two right here is just going to move over here. So let's just get rid of this. Whoops. I just went and deleted everything. All right. Cosine. <laughs> oh, I try to save time. And then I got that. And then let's just go and get rid of that little part right there. And let's go and put the two right there. So just save me a little bit of space, not really time. 
Okay, so then what are we going to be able to do here? Well, as I know, let's just write this out, 2 sine of x cosine of x is equal to sine of 2x, which is this guy right there. Okay, so I'm going to use that, and I will be able to then say cosine squared x plus sine squared x 2 sine x cosine of x which is going to be cosine squared x plus sine squared x here's this guy right there okay which if we get this becomes sine of 2x and then we can use our Pythagorean identity which says cosine squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1, which means this is going to be equal to sine 2x like this, which is going to further simplify down to cosecant 2x. All right, so there you go, working these things out. Let's do one more here, and this one's going to be really complicated. Complicated just to be a little bit complicated. So I'm going to say 2 cosine to the power of 3x times sine of x minus 2 cosine of x times sine to the power of 3x. Well, I'm going to use an old one. This is the exponent rule. Let's see if you remember this. This is actually from my algebra tutorials, which says if I have a... B plus C, this is equivalent to A, B times A, C, like that. Well, what this is going to allow me to do is convert this. This is going to become negative 2 cosine X sine X times sine squared X plus 2 cosine X cosine squared x sine x, okay, getting bigger here. This further simplifies down to negative sine x cosine of x sine squared x plus 2 sine x cosine x cosine squared x Factor common terms, this becomes 2 sine of x cosine of x negative sine squared x plus cosine squared x. And then we can apply our double angle identities. Specifically, let's go and work with this one right here and this one right here. And if we do that, we'll go 2 sine x cosine x cosine 2x, which is equal to sine of 2x cosine of 2x, which gives us sine of 2 times 2x, or 4x over 2. And there you go. That is how you use Pythagorean and double angle identities to simplify rather complicated types of expressions. Hopefully you guys found something useful there. And like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.